Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out on the launch pad today with a uh, DN2A, capped off with a resupply module for our lunar research station that we will be restaffing uh, soon enough. We just need to get another batch of supplies out there to uh, make sure it's cool and that the uh, team that lands has everything they need to continue their work. So uh, let's set our throttle to full. SAS is already on. Our relative inclination with the moon is as low as it's going to get. So ignition sequence start. And we are all lit. Let's get these clamps off. A little bit of a slow crawl to orbit. This is a, a little bit heavier than our standard resupply module. It's been uh, outfitted a little differently. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing to orbit and get it on out to the moon. And uh, this mission is actually slightly above the uh, rated TLI for the uh, DN2A. Uh, not a problem. We just kind of absorbed that into our transfer stage for our, I'm sorry, our lunar capture stage that will uh, hopefully still be able to serve its duties. Uh, it is much the same design as our previous lunar resupply pods, but we'll Again, we'll get to the details of that later. So that explains our uh, rather slow liftoff, and uh, we are just going to try to pitch a little higher than normal. I think we should still be able to round out our orbit on the core stage alone. Uh, not overburning it or anything, but it's a super capable lift vehicle and a slightly uh, under capable uh, transfer stage, I guess, with those uh, five RL10s. And so now we're just going to aim straight down the horizon as we come up here on Booster Sep in just a couple of seconds. Very nice view. There they go. Off and away, and they do not collide with each other. And there's Fairing Sep a little later than normal, and now here's our first look at the resupply pod. Uh, again, pretty much the same design. I think the only change that has been made is that the uh, core on the bottom has been switched to the uh, Gina core because of its higher tonnage limit and its ability to shut down. And the uh, top tank has been uh, sized up quite a bit actually and it now holds not only food, water, and oxygen but a healthy supply of fuel as we might need it to uh, help any crewed lander that lands there short on fuel or if uh, our recent design for a six crew lander um, proves horrible, we can refuel it on the surface and make sure that it can get back to orbit safely um, at the cost. So it is, of course, a, a whole lot heavier, but uh, that added runtime should be more than accounted for. So we are coming up here on Miko. There's orbit and stage set. We'll go ahead and stage in the RL10s. Uh, Those are the 3-3s and plot our maneuver for the moon. There we go, pretty good. Switch our view out here and just uh, kind of taper it in a little bit. Yeah, we are uh, a little beyond the capacity of our uh, A upper stage. Uh, I think we're gonna need a little over three kilometers per second. We've got like uh, a little less than three kilometers per second uh, in the stage. So we will have to round out our transfer burn on our capture stage. Uh, not a huge deal. Again, we've got plenty of margin in the lander itself because targeted landings take uh, a lot more fuel and so we've kind of built that margin in. We have of course abandoned bringing the crates uh, down. We have four unused crates on the surface so I think we're okay on number of crates for storing spare parts or parts that need to be removed from things although uh, I don't think it's exactly a necessity but we'll get to some more lunar operations later once we can get uh, another crew out there to resume research. Of course, they'll have a, a lot of fantastic other things to do also. So RL-10s are lit, uh, aid of a little bit of physics warp to help us speed through this burn a little bit. Also just laying down on the H key, trying to uh, burn through what thruster fuel there is on that A upper stage. Uh, it's not going to give us a, a whole lot of a boost, but any, any little bit we can get, we can spare our uh, capture stage from having to spend. And, you know, unspent fuel is just dead mass taking up space. So why not put it out the back? About a quarter of the way through the burn here. I'm actually surprised those thrusters haven't uh, been completely spent by now. 
There they go. They are finally empty, so we can go ahead and unlock the fuel on our transfer stage just to make sure we don't get that uh, silly error where it thinks there's no fuel even though there is because if you stage an engine in and all its fuels are locked. All right, A upper stage is spent. We have lit the uh, AJ-10 118K, I believe. And we will just uh, use it to round out this burn, coming up on the last 100 or so meters per second, maybe 80 at that point. And paying very, very close attention to where our encounter brings us. There it is. All right. We'll just uh, finish that off on RCS, bring ourselves in nice and close for a very uh, Oberth effecty capture. Uh, make sure our fuel's still good and plot our uh, maneuver for orbit. Yeah, it's not too bad, but it is a little more than what that capture stage uh, has available. So it looks like we'll result to the lander's own fuel to round out our orbit. Uh, nothing unusual, typically. But as you notice, as we make our approach here, we can actually do this in a single pass. We don't even have to insert ourselves into orbit. We can just go straight for landing. This is actually a pretty nice approach, despite it being uh, at nighttime. Uh, just a little bit of dialing in with the uh, inclination and such, and trying to eyeball it as best we can. So we'll go ahead and get ourselves focused into this node. Uh, it says the runtime on these engines is like seven minutes or is that 12 minutes? Seven minutes, but yeah, it says the burn is going to take 12 minutes. That's where I got confused. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and light up about five minutes ahead of the node, considering that we're going to have to switch over to our Astris engines um, before this burn is actually complete. We'll probably just uh, jettison this capture stage uh, into orbit. It will make a nice little comms relay, hopefully, as we've had some issues with that in the past. Although, thankfully, this is not one of those times we have uh, a solid connection with Earth uh, as we've got line of sight. So that does help us out a whole, whole lot. All right, capture stage is spent. We will uh, eject it out the back hastily as hell, and uh, fire up those Astris engines, finish reducing our inclination, and then we'll just uh, move right over to our retrograde vector, restart those engines, and um, bring our course in line. Now I'm going to plot my dummy node here to give us an idea of how much runtime we're looking at here for our braking maneuver. Just a, a little couple quick taps just to adjust a little bit of what I think is uh, resident inclination difference. Make sure that all of our tanks are unlocked now, get our landing gear extended, and then uh, time warp on into the node. And of course, as we make this burn, it's going to prolong our time to the node while also uh, adjusting our approach. So we're going to aim a little bit above it and push that periapsis out in front of us. Now, this is just kind of a dance between do you want to fire straight on the retrograde and uh, miss undershooting the target, or do you want to shoot above retrograde and push that peri or apogee, apoapsis. Sorry, I'll never get that right. Uh, way too much ahead of us means that we're going to spend a lot more time falling and thus accelerating speed, which is, uh, of course, a, a waste of Delta V. One of these days, I'm going to figure out how to plot a suicide burn and actually execute it by hand because Mechjeb's suicide burn timer is crap, and I will never trust that thing. Mechjeb is a dirty, lying liar <laughs> who uh, is really only good at giving me time until closest approach and relative inclination figures. Don't know if I trust him so much to pilot spacecraft for me. That's just me. To each their own. I like to play the game. All right. So we've killed a lot of our velocity, so I'm going to plot yet another dummy node. And it says that node will be in seven minutes, and it'll take us two and a half minutes to get there. And I will run right past the burn time. F4 will bring up our targeting reticles so I can have a uh, good view of the target. We're actually uh, not that far off. Surprise, surprise. Maybe I've gotten kind of good at this. Yeah, let's not... Don't let me get too full of myself. It usually results in tragedy. So some small corrections, and we'll try to zero out as much of this uh, horizontal velocity as we can. Bring ourselves down straight down on top of the target. Haven't quite zeroed it out yet. Need a little bit more adjustment. And, uh, of course, we are a bit off target. So we'll let ourselves fall 
a little bit so we can get a more accurate figure on where exactly we need to point this silly thing. And then, of course, it's just a whole lot of tapping on the engines and uh, making sure that I'm uh, pointing the nose in the correct direction to bring us down uh, as close to target as possible. So always an interesting ballet to watch <laughs> me desperately struggle and constantly uh, lean the wrong way half the time while the engines are firing, exacerbating the problem. And, uh, yeah, that's our rovers throwing our targeting off. They're usually all very much clustered together, and then some debris a couple of kilometers out. I guess we should make an effort to go collect that at some point. Might reduce this absolutely terrible lagging load-in time that we have. And, uh, of course, some of the frame rate drop that we experience as we get in closer. Uh, those reticles, though, do make it a little difficult to estimate distance. So I can't really make out the structures on the base. I can, however, see those targeting reticles pretty clearly. But uh, 730 some odd meters above the surface, we'll just uh, bring ourselves down a little closer and get a better view. We pretty much killed our vertical velocity and we're just kind of bouncing on the throttle trying to make this landing as accurate as possible. We would like to be close to some of those ports and honestly, I would like to be on the opposite side of the base from where I am now. Uh, keep all the toxic fuels and such uh, a little further away from the habitation module if I can. And I don't know what that is that is falling away from us with that reticle down there, but it's a little weird. All right, now I've gotten myself on the correct side and uh, relatively near where I actually want to park. I will, of course, lean the spacecraft the wrong way and screw everything up but uh we got like three minutes of runtime still left on the these engines accounting for about 2500 meters per second so this is actually the calmest i've ever been during a landing of course that uh won't stop me from kind of screwing this up Just trying to dance this heavy thing down on the exact right spot where i want it is a lot more difficult than i ever would have anticipated so i'm going to turn you over to old me to uh, give you a live account of this landing as we come back into uh, real-time footage. Oh, well, okay. Oh, please don't hit the thing. Nudge. Oh, that was bad. That was real bad. I don't want to take off again because it's going to toss that thing down a hill with the exhaust. Oh, well, okay. Parked a little close, but no big deal. Um, when we get a Kerbal out here, we can just relocate the power couple. Uh, I mean, it's obviously not attached to anything anyway, and maybe then we'll figure out why our rover is 140 meters away. No big deal. All right, hey, we made it. Fantastic. Uh, all that fuel is gone. That was predictable. I think this should be the only tank that still has stuff in it. Excellent. Oh, lots of fuel. Fantastic. All right, and we'll just go ahead and shut down our avionics. Shut down. That'll take a second or two to get there, but no big deal. And uh, shut down our bottom core. Whew, okay, well... We had lots of margin to play with, so I wasn't really worried about running out of fuel. I was just, um, you know, worried about parking on top of our enriched plutonium bank over here. Anyway, uh, soon enough we'll get the crew out here. They can resume research for this data that's already stored in here. And then, of course, uh, deploy our rover to get some more science from another biome. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.